what's going on YouTube? Welcome back and welcome to Chris Wrestling Views here on YouTube.com. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe to my YouTube channel you guys enjoy today. So you guys got another video for you you guys. Uh, today, the video once again is by Tap Out Connor. And so um, he made this video like, uh, I'll say about a week ago. Um, it is titled Depressing WWE Facts. Uh, you don't want to know so you guys it's a lot of things that we know, don't know about superstars a lot of things that we do know about superstars but at the same time you guys um they you know some wrestlers some people in the world are very um they very kept private they may smile and you know everything like that but at the same time you guys there there are deep deep and dark things that go behind the scene. But further ado, you guys, and not to take too much of you guys' time, gonna try to make these videos short, but let's go ahead and check out a video right now. Fun, but these facts about WWE are anything but. You may not believe this fact at first, considering WWE wrestlers don't actually fight each other. However, wrestlers dying young sadly isn't that uncommon, and here's a very depressing stat. Wrestlers have a higher death rate than professional football, wow. baseball, hockey, and basketball players. To put it into perspective, here's a graph that the website 538 created. Kind of, As you can see, WWE scary. wrestlers die Look younger than many chart. other athletes. This fact might come as a surprise, but WWE doesn't cover the majority of their wrestlers' expenses. While some stars, usually big names or veterans, do have their travel costs covered by WWE, a lot of wrestlers don't get that luxury. Most WWE wrestlers have to drive themselves and pay for their own what? rental cars, their meals, and hotels. Additionally, WWE does not provide health insurance, but in 2011, the company started requiring the wrestlers to have their own. This means that wrestlers have to pay for health insurance out of their own pockets if they want to wrestle for WWE. All of these expenses add up, and in some cases, wrestlers can't afford to work for WWE. In November 2008, a wrestler named Super Crazy quit the company. One Super of the reasons crazy. was that Super Crazy was getting paid $500 per show, which wasn't enough to cover his expenses, which included traveling from his home in Mexico. Speaking of travel, oh there's another very sad truth about WWE. Wrestlers usually spend over 300 days a year on the road. They typically work three to four nights per week, and because of all that, wrestlers don't get to spend much time at home or with their families. Even if there's a holiday, like Christmas, WWE stars will usually still have to work if it falls on a day when the company is having a show. If that wasn't exhausting enough, wrestlers are never truly off-duty. Sometimes, a wrestler can be asked last minute to work a show. This happened to Edge in December 2021. The Radar WWE. Superstar was in the middle of traveling when WWE had him flown to a show because some wrestlers were unable to compete. You would think with how tough working for WWE is that wrestlers would bond together, but that isn't always true. Numerous wrestlers have shared stories of being bullied backstage. Jeff and Matt Hardy revealed that when they were new to WWE, that fellow wrestler, JBL, took their clothes, money, and credit cards and threw them what? into a dumpster. Years later, JBL would bully The Miz when he first joined WWE. Not only that, but JBL seemed proud of what he did when asked about it in an interview. Former WWE stars Bully Ray and Mark Henry were on a radio show together and seemed to defend this type of behavior. Bully Ray even boasted about slapping a new wrestler as hard as he could after the young talent complained about how rough Ray was in the ring. As we mentioned, wrestling is brutal and takes a toll on a wrestler's body. Unfortunately, there's dish. another fact that makes it even worse. CM Punk revealed in 2014, like during his last few months in WWE, he had a staph infection. What was really shocking was that Punk claimed that WWE's doctors misdiagnosed the infection several times. Additionally, the best in the world also suffered a concussion during the 2014 Royal Rumble. Punk said that he passed a concussion test this despite everyone knowing that he actually did have a concussion. Additionally, we've heard stories from other wrestlers of competing despite having injuries. In the case of CM Punk, he was one of WWE's biggest stars, so if this is how the medical staff treated him, how would they handle less popular wrestlers? Over the years, WWE has collected hours of footage from their numerous shows. However, there are some videos that you aren't allowed to see, but you probably wouldn't want to watch anyways. To find out what they are, watch the video on screen. That is crazy, you guys. WWE is this big global company. They don't provide health insurance. They don't do none of this stuff. Like, you guys, is WWE serious? Like, they have to drive their own. They have a higher death rate and all that, you guys. Like, 
It's crazy. I can't believe, like, this is some actual stuff WWE doesn't want you to know. But it's depressing. And I'm just thinking about all the wrestlers, you guys, that went through this stuff and that are probably still going through this stuff. Especially the ones that are not really wrestling and making any money, which is crazy. But you guys, let me know what you think about this video. Um, be sure to um, leave, give me a thumbs up on this video, a subscribe, and a, and a uh, comment down below. But thank you guys um, for tuning in to Chris Wrestling Views here on YouTube.com. Uh, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Peace.